welcome to Lab 13. May the Lord be with you. And Mr. Sylvester here once again helping me out. Hi everybody, stay healthy. We miss seeing you face to face. Definitely. Yeah, this is a whole different uh, way of teaching. And uh, it is really tough. So I'm teaching in class, maybe five, six, seven people put their cameras on. And then the rest of the people are just little black screens with their names. And so, and then, because I have so many students in some classes, they're on the, like the second and third page. So I don't even know who came to class by the time class is over. That is not fun for me as a teacher. Uh, but anyway, we're going to get through this. Things are going to change. It's going to get better again. And just hang in there and pray. Pray to God in heaven that things get better fast. All right, so Lab 13 is on two, two similar topics. One is called interference, and that's when waves coming from different places end up in the same spot. And then we add those waves called superposition, as we've talked about in class. We superpose those waves and then see what the net effect is. And if you create a nice uh, geometry or a nice situation for creating the waves, then you can create some pretty incredible effects. So we're going to look at the interference of what's called a double slit. And that's two little openings that are separated by a certain amount of distance. And we let light enter, plane wave light. They have the same phase. So when the light comes in, they hit the two slits together. So the wave front is hitting the opening in the slits simultaneously. So one of the conditions for this is that the, wet, the light is a plane wave. But it's really, really easy to create a plane wave when the slits are so tiny. You just need to be a little bit far away and you got yourself a plane wave. All right, now the guy who came up with this double slit experiment, his name is Thomas Young. And he lived uh, in the end of the 1700s. So you see he's born in 1773 and he died in 1829. So that's, that is not too long ago, not too long ago. Newton, on the other hand, he lived in the 1600s. And he and Huygens had a little argument on whether light was made of particles or whether they were made of waves. And as you know from lecture last topic, the wave analysis of Huygens could prove a lot of things like refraction, and reflection and so on. Uh, Einstein's particle model, they, nobody, he could not really do anything with it. I mean, he could say, well, you know, when light hits a mirror and bounces off, it's just like a ball, a particle, hitting a wall and bouncing off. So that's about it. But Huygens was, was much more effective in describing more complicated uh, behavior of light, like refraction. So anyway, this whole debate on whether light was a particle or a wave would not be resolved for almost a hundred years. And that's when Thomas Young came up with the double slit experiment. And basically what he did was he took a piece of glass and he held it over a candle. And so the glass became totally black with the soot from a candle. And then he took like two razor blades or two knives really, really close together. And then he scratched two little lines in the what they call that lamp black. So he put two little lines in there and then he let the light go through those lines. All right, now up here on the screen, there's a picture of him. And when they wrote about this guy, this guy accomplished so many things. He's the guy who deciphered the, with the Rosetta Stone, uh, the ancient, ancient Egyptian uh, language, you know, the hier hieroglyphics. So he's famous for that. He's also famous for Young's modulus. You know, when you, put, when you put stress and strain on a wire and it stretches, he's the first guy to do that. And we, in honor of him, we call it the Young's modulus when you take a wire and like stretch it. But anyway, they, uh, somebody wrote about him and said, this, this guy, this is the last man who knew everything. So he's your Renaissance man, the very last Renaissance to walk the earth. Anyway, he wrote a paper from the light when it came through two little slits, it definitely described the nature of waves and how waves interfere. 
and the paper was called on the theory of light and color and uh, he included this drawing and this is a drawing of like the waves in water like you're to you were to drop two rocks one at point A and one at point B simultaneously and those waves went out into the water how they would interfere and then create way off at the distance they would create places where the waves all add up. See, this is like the crest, and this is the trough, this is the crest, this is the trough. So if you go right along this line right here, you can see they're all adding up, and that would be a nice bright spot. And then over here at D, they would be all adding up, and that would be a nice bright spot there. And then C, and so along, so on, so long, so, <laughs> so all along there, uh, we have the two waves adding up, and then in between is where it'd be dark. So this is nice and bright, and then here it'd be totally dark, totally dark, totally dark, and so on. So right in the middle, between the two points, is a nice bright spot. And he called those things fringes, light fringes. And we've got a little video that's going to give you a little more information on the background of this. So I'm going to go give it a little click. And uh, uh, it was made recently by, by a guy named whose company's name Veritasium. What is light? What is light? Light what light is what, what is light? That's a good question. This is a, what is light? <laughs> Isn't it an element? Um light is brightness, I guess. We have auras. We all have auras. Which are light? Yes, they are. It, it lights up the room. It makes it not dark. What's the difference between blue light and red light? The color. It, goes in your eyes and then you see stuff? Yeah. To be fair, the question of what light is, is not an easy one. For centuries, the greatest minds in science debated this issue. In the late 1600s, Newton proposed that light was a stream of particles, or corpuscles. He proposed this in his treatise Optics. But at the same time, a Dutch physicist named Huygens proposed that light was a wave. And this debate raged on until it was settled by the experiment I've recreated today. Thomas Young's double slit experiment. To make sure I got the experiment right, I went to the original source. With the help of Brady Heron, I managed to get into the vault underneath the Royal Society in London. There I found Thomas Young's handwritten notes from 1803. I brought into the sun dream a slip of card, about 1 30th of an inch in breadth, and observed its shadow, either on the wall or on other cards held at different distances, besides the fringes of colors on each side of the shadow. The shadow itself was divided by similar parallel fringes of small dimensions. Wow. This is an experiment so simple that you could make it at home, and yet so fiddly that I had never seen it before done with sunlight. I was thinking about doing it in a box, like a like a fridge box. And you could take it out on the street. Taking it out on the street. Could I possibly interview you guys for about a minute? <laughs> We're doing a science experiment. I have here is an empty box. Mm -hmm. And this is a little eyepiece where we can look in, and this is a hole. And I'm going to place this slide above that hole. And if you look closely, you'll see that there's two openings. Very yeah. narrow openings side by side. It's a double slit. Now before we have a look, we need to tilt it towards the sun a little bit. So we want the sun to hit this double slit directly. What are we going to see on the bottom? Well, the obvious box? thing you think you're going to see is you're going to see two, two lines. Two lines on the bottom of the box. Two bright bands. Two little lines. Yeah. yeah, I think it'll be... One, one line for the two. I've been expecting the whole box without. That would be a kaleidoscope of some sort. A bunch of colors. Probably, yeah. Rainbow, different colors. There, have a look. You expected to see kind of one line. Is that what you see? No. I see dots. How many? It's one circle. Well, there's one, there's one in the middle strong. There's two out of sight. The two on the outside are multicolored. The one in the middle is just white. The part of a rainbow? The rainbow color as well. Quite a few colors, so lots of little dots. But there are more dots appearing. I think I can even see more dots. Spreading along. Yeah, that's real. Yeah, I can see tons of dots now. Not tons, but I can see dots spreading. Across that one. Yeah, definitely. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, that's incredible. And that's just nothing else apart from... Two slits. Two slits. That's incredible. So all we're doing is we're putting a light through two very narrow slits side by side. So how does this make any sense? There's some kind of principle involved here. The average person's not familiar with it. 
That's the only explanation. No, I'm really confused by it, but I'd like to find out why. People were debating, is light a wave, or is it made of particles? So what causes that? Well, if light were behaving as particles, you would expect them to go through each slit and just produce a bright spot underneath. So we would see two bright spots on the bottom of the box. But if light's behaving as waves, then the wave from one slit can interact with the waves from the other slit. I've got a demonstration here on a little pond where we can see this with water waves. I have two sources of ripples, which are basically like the two slits. When I create ripples with a single source, they travel out with circular wave fronts. Nothing particularly surprising there. But if I add a second source of ripples, then we start getting an interesting pattern. This pattern is created by the ripples from the two sources interacting with each other. Where they meet up peaks with peaks and troughs with troughs, the amplitude of the wave is increased. That's what we call constructive interference. But if the peak from one wave meets up with the trough from the other, then we get destructive interference and there's basically no wave there. And this is exactly what was happening with the light. When the light from one slit met up peaks with peaks and troughs with troughs, they constructively interfered and produced a bright spot. But if the trough from the wave from one slit met up with the peak of the wave from the other slit, they would destructively interfere and you wouldn't see any light there. It's light cancelling itself out. This is basically the same as like having two drops of water fall in a swimming pool. That's right. Exactly the same. And they overlap. As this ripple over overlaps with those ripples, yeah. down the bottom, you get a series of, you get like a bright spot, and then a dark spot, and a bright spot, and a dark spot, and a bright spot. Now there's a slight complication, which is that sunlight is composed of many different colors, and they have different wavelengths. So obviously they're going to meet up at slightly different points. And that's what caused the rainbowing effects as we go further from the central maximum. So if you saw the ones to the right were slightly colored, yeah, that's that's because working. the reds are going to meet up at different places than the blues. And that's all that makes the color difference is different wavelengths. Exactly. That's amazing. So the difference between so red, that red bit over there and the green, the green part, just, I'm, I'm seeing it's that it's just different, different wavelength. wavelength. And that's how we bring in all these beautiful colours all around us. Exactly. That's amazing. I'm, I'm amazed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good on you. Thanks, Ben. Thank you. Thank you. I have been enlightened. <laughs> <laughs>
to the screen where we're going to project them. Uh, if you go along this line right here, you can see total constructive interference. And next to it is the place where you see crest and trough cancel. So this would be dark. And then next to that, where all the black dots are, that would be constructive interference again. So what you'd see on the wall would be a bunch of bright and dark spots, beginning with the middle line, the midline, the line of symmetry here, where it's nice and bright. Now if you just have one wavelength coming in, this would be like red light, and then red light, and red light up the wall. And then if you change to uh, green light, then you'd have green light, green light, but the positions would be different for where, where they constructively interfere. And I can demonstrate that on the wall using what's called a diffraction gradient. So Thomas Young, he used two little slits. But some other guy came along after him and said, well, what if we put like a hundred strips on that lamp black piece of glass? And we put them with, so they're really, really close together. So I have three little openings here on this card. And the first one has 100 slits per millimeter. And then the next one, 300. And the last one is 600. And then over here, I have one that has 1,000 lines per millimeter. Now what this does is, it makes for very, very sharp constructive interference. Because any little phase that's different from another wave, unless it's right where the waves constructively interfere, they'll cancel each other out. So only at the constructive points do you see light when you add more and more lines. And they call this a diffraction gradient. Diffraction, diffraction gradient. So in the experiment today, we're actually going to use a double slit to make five measure, uh, actually make three measurements, and then we're going to use these diffraction gratings to make the remainder. So we got a thousand, three hundred, a hundred. I have one with eighty lines per millimeter, uh, six and six hundred lines per millimeter. So we can get eight measurements by um, changing these gratings. And what we're doing, since there's one has like six hundred. Another one has a hundred. That means the lines are like six times closer together. Okay, so lines are six times closer together. And we're going to study what that effect has on, on the light. So if you look up at the, at the screen, and we'll do the demonstration in one second. Um, actually, let's do the demonstration right now. All right, so I'm going to turn the light off. Mr. Sylvester is going to grab, his, grab the camera, and we're going to look towards the back of the room. And we're going to keep the lights on for one second so he doesn't accidentally trip over something that's in the way. All right, good. All right. So I've got a, um, a green laser, uh, red laser here, and I'm going to go ahead and shine it through the 100 lines per millimeter grating on the wall. And you can see all the dots. You know what? I'm going to turn the, uh, over the PowerPoint off for one second. So you can really see um, the details. OK. So this is 100 lines. Now you can see when the, when the light goes over the wall, the very center point is the brightest red dot. And on either side, there's another bright dot, and another bright dot, and so on. Those are all constructive interference. And we number them M1, M2, M3, and the middle one is M equals zero. All right, so how many do we have up on the wall for 100? So if I turn like this, by the way, the most I can have is when this red dot goes over to 90 degrees, okay? Because I was holding the card, per I was holding the card parallel to the wall, so that bright dot on the wall is at zero degrees. So if I turn everything 90 degrees, we can count how many are up there. And the wall is really dark there, so we should be able to count pretty well. So I, I read, I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I see eleven. I think I saw more over here on the wall. Let's see. Uh, let me go right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
11. Uh, nope, that's it, 11. So M equals 11. And that's because the lines aren't that, that close together. There's only 100 lines per millimeter. So now I'm going to jump to 300 lines per millimeter. And you can see they're much further apart now. And uh, I can only see one, two, three, four. And that is it, four. Now I'm going to go to 600. And I can see one, two, and that's it. There's some reflection going on. They might fool you. But anyway, there's only two there. And then when I go to 1,000, there's only one. So let me just show you that. And astronomers use use gradings with a thousand because there's only one. See, it's kind of messed up, but still, it's a bright spot. That's constructive uh, interference right there. Keep going. I'm at 90 degrees. Nothing else. Just that one spot. Now watch what happens when I go to green. Oh, before I do that, let me put it at 600, and uh, we'll, we'll mark on the wall where that is. So I'm holding it straight ahead, and the M equals 1 is right there at the end of that strip that's going across the wall. So I'm going to put a green laser through, and then you'll be able to compare the bright, the, the bright spot for the green laser versus the red laser. All right, here we go. Here we go. You're going to like this. All right, there you go. So straight ahead, you can see it's much closer to n equals 0. Remember, the one in the middle is n equals 0. Here, I'll turn that. Let's see how many you can see. One, one, two. Uh, that's a reflection back there. So that's it. Only two at 600. All right. You know, I'm sure you want to see it at 100. Let me show you 100. Look at that. Is that spectacular? It's so bright in the middle that it's hard to tell which one's the middle one because it's a little bit bright left. The one on the left a little brighter than the one on the right. But you can tell that uh, straight ahead, is the brightest one, and there's a ton. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, ooh, twelve. So that last one was so dim, we couldn't see it with the red one. So there's twelve, M equals twelve. All right, so I'm going to turn the lights back on. And the, video, uh, the PowerPoint, we'll turn that on. And we'll talk about the math that goes into predicting where these spots will end up on the screen. All right. So anyway, here, this is, again, this is just showing you the waves going in space. Uh, this would be n equals 0. This n equals 1. And then up here would be the next one, and so on. Now, for the double slit experiment, those slits were so far apart that he would have had quite a few uh, bright spots on the wall. All right. And here's the geometry right here. So you got light, light coming in over there on the right. Slit number one. And then up above, let me see if I can, okay, good. Up above is slit A, oh, they call them slit A and B here. So the light comes out, and you see this point on the wall over here is longer, R2 is longer than R1. Now, it looks like a big triangle right here, but this isn't a scale. These slits are super close together. In fact, the thousand millimeters, a uh, thousand lines, thousand openings per millimeter means that they're separated by one micron, which is 10 to the minus six meters. So if you have one micron right here, and this is, the, this is to scale. This point here would be all the way out in the soccer field. All right? <laughs> it would be easily 100 meters away. So these two lines are effectively parallel to each other. All right? These two lines, R1 and R2, from this point right here out, they're basically parallel. And then the only difference is this amount right here. Well, if it happens to be equal to any number of wavelengths, then you're going to have constructive interference. Because remember, when the two crests come together or the two troughs, we have constructive interference. And M is counting how many wavelengths are there. So M could be 
uh, zero. If it's zero, then there's no path difference, and we're right there in the middle. That's the, the symmetry axis right there. M equals one would be the first bright spot, M equals two, three, four, five, and then this one here is the nth spot on the wall. And because of symmetry, if we went down, there would be points down just like there's points up. All right, now this triangle right here is a right triangle, and you can see that D times this, this is, a, is the hypotenuse of that triangle. So D sine theta is equal to M lambda. So that's the double slit formula. D sine theta equals M lambda for constructive interference. All those little bright spots. So it's really nice. This is for a double slit, but it works equally well for a diffraction grating that has 100 lines or 1,000 lines per millimeter, okay? Because the constructive points of interference will still be at the same spot. All right. Now, in order to get the angle, if you're in the laboratory, you have to measure the distance to your screen. That is called L. And then you measure how far this, the bright spot is from the center line right there. And that's Y for the nth constructive interference. And you use inverse tangent to find out what the angle is. So if you're doing an experiment, that's how you measure the angle. You've got to measure the distance to your screen and then measure over to where the bright spot is. Okay, so that is double, that is a double, this is called interference, and it's based on the double slit interference effect that Young came up with in 1803, it looked like. I thought it was 1801. I stand corrected. All right, so I'm going to go to the next slide. Now, next slide, it turns out, after Young came up with his double slit experiment, somebody, somebody discovered that if you let light just go through one slit, you'll actually get a diff what's called a diffraction pattern. And a diffraction pattern is light interfering with itself. Okay, light interfering with itself. So I got three openings here. One is very tiny, about the size of the wavelength of the light. And when light passes through an opening that's equal to the wavelength of the light, it produces a very nice spherical wave. Now, if the opening is greater than that amount, but not too great, so this guy over here looks like he's about 8, uh, 10 times the wavelength of the light, and this one looks like it's about 15 or 16 times. All right, as you change the opening size, uh, the pattern on the wall will change. And I just leave you to think about how could that thing change? And I'll give you a little bit more information to uh, help you along the way. Plus, you know, we'll be studying that for the next, couple, uh, next week. We'll be talking about interference and diffraction. But anyway, this corner right here, light bends around corners. And over here, light bends around this corner. So you see you're getting a, a spherical type wave on the edge and a spherical wave on the edge over here. And that light now will go out and inter interfere with itself. So by redirecting the light, by bending around a corner, you can create that. So for example, this piece of dark material, light can't go through it, that little edge right there, if you let light come in and diffract off that edge and look on a screen, you get this effect over here. Bright, dark, bright, dark, bright, dark, bright, dark. And so nowadays, uh, optical people uh, you know, like optical engineers, people like that, they actually take those patterns and do a Fourier transform on it, and they can actually determine something about the shape of the object that's creating that diffraction. All right, but we're going to keep it really simple. We're only going to let light go through a single slit. All right, and when we do that, we'll get a pattern that looks like, like this. So the light's coming through the slit over here, and as it travels in space, it'll interfere with each other, and we want to figure out where are the dark spots. Now notice I said dark spots. For single slit, it's much easier to predict where the dark spots are rather than the bright spots. All right, I'm going to show you how to do that using the same kind of geometry uh, we did before. So in your experiment, basically what you're going to do is you're going to change the size of the opening over here 
and then you're going to measure the distance.